Good morning, everyone. Good morning, sir. That's great. So, uh, starting by myself, my name is Shoaib, Shoaib Malik, and I'm from Gravity Flying India. And we teach the students about aeromodeling. Any one of you have heard about aeromodeling or aerosport? No? So, first of all, uh, before starting, we'll just go to a small video to get the small good idea about aeromodeling. Then we'll start uh, whatever today's program is. We'll go with the video, then we'll have a small presentation about the aeromodeling. And at the end of the session, we'll fly the very drone here. And at the ground, we'll be flying the, this RC plane and small RC parachute. But the ground is restricted with the size, so we'll not go at the height. We'll try to fly the, this two planes with a low level and we'll try to land there. So this is our today's schedule and now starting with the small uh, video. Starting from the paper plane to this kind of real scaled RC flying model. So plane, then this kind of wooden static model, this kind of RC planes, this is RC uh, multi-copters, drones. So this everything includes in aeromodeling. But it's a different photographer there, this all thing comes under aeromodeling. We have uh, different categories like uh, say paper plane as you was told, the normal paper plane, then the 3D printed paper plane, then third is this kind of wooden static model. Why we are using this wooden model? To give you idea that of what different kind of parts are there in aircraft and how to assemble that. Then uh, this kind of RC plane, the third category, and this kind of uh, multi-copters, the, uh, the different categories. So that there are so many different categories in our modeling. You can choose anyone or everyone, everything. That depends on you and we are just motivating you to like, uh, we are just igniting you to come in the aviation branch with this aeromodeling. Why aeromodeling? Uh, as I told you about, the, there are so many benefits and this is the future of aviation in the whole world. Not in India only, but in the whole world, the flying things will be the common like at the smartphone is now. In aeromodeling, we have two main categories. Like, uh, we have divided this aeromodeling, whole aeromodeling category in two different things. The first is a RC plane and the second is a multi -corpus. This is the main two category what we are teaching and explaining. This is a high wing RC plane or we can say a fixed wing plane and this is a multi-copter category. And today we will just go about the, uh, like we can say, uh, good and the main part of the plane. What is the main part where we sit in the aircraft? Please don't say it, it's a chair. Huh? Yes? That is for the pilot. For the passengers? What we say, if, uh, if I sit in my car, what I'll say, I am sitting in a cabin, driving a car. Yes, the car is called a cabin. So in aircraft, it is known as fuselage. This is the fuselage. The center portion of the aircraft is known as the fuselage. So if we have a transport aircraft in which we travel, that is a transport aircraft, so, in a transport aircraft, the passengers are there. What if we have the cargo plane then? What will be in the cargo plane? The fuselage. The cargo will be there in the fuselage. And what if we have the fighter plane then? What will be in the fuselage? This is a fighter design. Any idea what will be there in the fuselage in the fighter plane? In real, uh, in real fighter plane, there will, be, there will be a fuel and engine in the center of the fuselage. This, this is the, this is known as the fuselage, and in fighter plane, that will be only engine, nothing else. So, in a transport plane, what we are, where we are sitting, in the fuselage, and in the cargo plane, fuselage is having a different cargo, and in a fighter aircraft, the fighter aircraft is having engine in this fuselage. So, this is the main part, the main center part of the aircraft. Then the second main part is, 
wing. What if I remove the wing and try to fly this fuse bar only? Is it possible? Why? Because with the help of wings only we get lift. And when we have a lift, we will start flying. So wings are the only part by which we are getting lift. So this is a second main part. The first is a fuselage, second is a wing. And the third is tail section. This is a bladder design model and it's having a tail section there. What if I cut this tail section and try to fly? It will not fly. Why? Because this is the controlling section of the aircraft. Every moment of aircraft, if I want to go up, if I want to go down, if I want to go right or left, every moment of the aircraft is controlled by this tail section only. So this is the main controlling section of the aircraft. So uh, this is, there are the main three parts we say. The first is the fuselage, second is the wing for the lift, third is the tail section for the control and the fourth is the landing gear of undercarriage. This is a landing gear of undercarriage. Uh, in a car or bike we have an engine and that is connected to the wheel. We are getting the power to engine and directly connected to the uh, wheel. Is it similar to the aircraft also? Does aircraft wheel, aircraft tire is having any kind of power to do, move forward? Yes or no? Yes. How many of you say yes? And no? And rest of 50-50? Yes? Maybe and may not be. So the answer is no. In aircraft, tire, wheel or landing gear doesn't have any power. In aircraft also the wheel works same as like in this, just to move on ground like this. During takeoff, during landing and during uh, movement on the ground from one place to another, that is called taxi. So during takeoff, landing and taxi, wheels are just rolling movement. They are giving the rolling movement to the aircraft on the ground, nothing else. And they are just having the brake to control the aircraft. No power in the wheel of any kind of aircraft in the world. There is no power in wheel. Is it clear? So total main four part I have just covered today for the RC plane. Main uh, first is fuse glass, second is the wing, third is a tail section and fourth is a landing gear. Now uh, this is the photo image of RC plane. This is the same. How aircraft flies? Anyone know? There are so many different forces acting on that aircraft. No? Here. Yeah. There are four different forces always acting on we or us. The first is the gravity. What gravity does? <laughs> gravity pulls to the down, downward. Say if we are having the arrow in the bottom, gravity pulls the aircraft in the downward direction. And just opposite of the gravity, what we have? Lift. So what the condition I should have to fly? I should have the more gravity or more lift? What I should have? If I am having the weight of 100 kg, I am getting a lift of 101. Will I? Will I fly? Yes or no? Again, yes or no, please raise the hand, yes. No. Rest all. Now I want hand for 50, 52. Anyone? Maybe and may not be. If I, if my weight is 100 kg and I am getting the lift of 101 kg, then I will start flying. I will just leave the ground. But what will happen? I will not go uh, too much high. I will just leave the ground and will fly on the ground with the uh, ground level. If I want to go fly with the high level, uh, uh, like more height, then what I should do? I should uh, increase the speed, I should increase the lift. Then I, my increase the uh, lift will be 102, 105, 10, 15. Then I will gain more height. So to fly at high, uh, very high height, I should have the more lift than the gravity. What is thrust and what is drag? Yes? Sir, drag is the opposing force and thrust is the, uh, the force which is applied uh, to move forward. Okay. Any example for this? When we travel by a car and just uh, like uh, keep our hand outside the window, what happens? If I keep my hand like this, it will stay there. If I keep my hand like this, then my hand will go forward or backward? Backward. backward. So 
this is a drag. Air is striking on the palm and it's uh, forcing it to go back. Same in aircraft. Aircraft is also having a very quick cross section area. When aircraft tries to go forward, air molecule strikes on the cross section area of the aircraft and it tries to oppose forward movement. Say my hands, my, uh, I'm sitting in a car, car is moving forward, my hand is uh, trying to go forward, but air molecule is striking on my palm and my hand is, my hand is moving backward. So this is a drag. Same air molecules are doing there. It opposes, it opposes the forward movement of the aircraft. So that is a drag. And thrust is provided by the engine with the propeller. So what condition I should have to go forward? Should I have the more drag or more thrust? More thrust. More thrust. So what condition for thrust and drag should I have? Uh, sorry, thrust and lift I have. Which two force I should have the more and which two I should have less to fly? If both I should have more, this thrust and lift, I should have more if I want to fly. Then this two. Is it clear? So that was about the RC plane. Uh, we have a story now, like about uh, this having a fuselage, wing, wing is creating a lift and a start is flying, but in a multi-copter, in a drone, in a hexacopter, quadcopter, we don't have wing, then how it flies? Anyone? It doesn't have wing, yes, with the fan, but how? Uh, aircraft is also having a fan here. It is having a fan here, like this, but it's going forward, yes please? Sir, so we can say that uh, the wings create low pressure above the drone, so uh, the air below it uh, lifts it. Perfect. Now uh, I have a good example for you. This is a wing. Of this I have removed the wing from the aircraft, and this is the cross section area of the wing. Yes. What we can clearly identify is it's having a flat bottom, curved top. Thick frontage and thick tail. Is it okay? is it so or not? Yes. So what this shape of this design known as aerofoil shape? What is it? what is the name of this? This is aerofoil shape. An aerofoil shape creates a lift. So when aircraft is moving forward with a very high speed, air molecules is passing from the bottom of the wing and from the top of the wing. So this is having a curve. Is it? Can you see clearly this having a curve from the top? So air will go from top to bottom like this and the air what will hit the air molecules which are hitting and this is also like a slightly bent in the from the tail. So from the top and the from the bottom both air molecules will go in a downward direction. And the same as the Newton third law, accent reaction same equal opposite. So air molecules are striking in the down and the lift is creating in the bottom of the wing and the wing is going upward. So this is the story for the RC plane, this kind of fixed wing plane. So what about this multi-copter, the quad-copter or hexa-copter? The propeller you see here, it's having a four different propeller. Propeller is also having the same aerofoil shape like this. If I cut the propeller from here, it will be also the same design, same shape like this only. This, that will be also aerofoil shape. So what internet we can say? Here we have a two wing, one wing here, one wing here and the wing is rotating very high at very high speed. So this will also generate a lift in a bottom direction. So this will fly in the same manner. But the flying principle is same, but the principle for the lift is different. Yes? And now any question from you for this multi-copter and uh, this uh, fixed wing RC plane? No question? Yes? How do you change direction? Direction in this multi-copter or this plane? Both. 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 Uh, direction is again a control. This is the controlling section. My aircraft is uh, like going in a forward direction. If I want to turn right or left, then it's having a vertical stabilizer here. This is the vertical stabilizer and the moving surface is there, this. This is the moving surface known as rudder, R-U-D-E-R, rudder. 
This rudder is used for direction change. How? If my aircraft is flying in a straight manner, if I want to turn right, then I have to turn this rudder to the right direction like this. What will happen? Air molecule will strike on this surface. It will push here like this and the aircraft will turn right. And if I want to turn left, then I will do this like left. Air will come here and it will create pressure over this. And this will be pushed like this and the aircraft will turn to the left. This is for the direction control right left. What if I want to go up and down? Where I should move this control surface up or down? If I want to go up, my aircraft is flying like this. And I want to go in a, like I want to climb. I want to gain the height. So this is the control surface responsible for the height. So where I should move this? Down like this? Or move like up like, like this? I want clear hands for down and clear hands for up. Down. I want to go up. I want to go up. So this should be down. Is it okay? Now down please. And hands down and uh, I should move up. How many of you? And how many of you 50-50? Please raise your hand 50-52. Okay. Now uh, I am creating a scenario once again. This is the aircraft. I am flying in a level manner. Like I am flying with a straight level flight like this. I want to go up. So this is a elevator. Say it's known as elevator. I should move like this. This. If I want to go up, I have to move elevator in upward direction. Why? When this will move up, the air will strike over this. And that will create a pressure over this. And that will push the tail section in a down like this. And the nose will go up. And if I want to go down, then I have to shift this elevator to the downward. The air will strike over this, create a pressure bottom of the tail section. It will lift and the nose will go down. Is it clear or doubt? Yes? So this is the tail section and then why it is for? This is for? This and this. Yes? Perfect. Uh, everyone knows how to drive two wheeler? Yes. Unofficially. You don't have the license to drive? Yes. When we try to turn right or left, what happens? Don't, uh, uh, if you are riding a two-wheeler, want to try uh, turn the right side, then what actually happens when you turn right? The your two-wheeler will slightly bend. Then you will turn. Is it? Or you directly turn to the right? If you directly turn to the right, then also your two-wheeler will bend slightly, but automatically, and then it will turn. Similarly, in aircraft also. When we want to turn right or left, and we used to roll the aircraft like this, if I want to turn right in this direction, then I will roll like this, then I will turn. Why? Why? Any one of you, why? What happens in two-wheeler? If your two-wheeler doesn't bend, and if you directly turn to the right, what will happen? You will speed. Yes? Barish no hota hai, Bhai, the actual speed will go jata na. Why? Because it doesn't get the enough friction to turn right. When if I will not have the good enough friction to turn right with the wheel, then your cooler will skip. Same here also, aircraft, when aircraft is turning right, first is that like remains in its own position. Is it so? My aircraft is flying in a forward direction, I am turning right, but aircraft is flying in a forward direction. So what will happen? I am flying this, like this and turning right, rudder right, then aircraft will turn this, like this, but the movement of the aircraft will be like this, this. Why? Because it is in a forward direction movement. So what I will do, first I will bend like this roll, then turn. So what will happen? It will turn like this. Have you seen in the air or in a moving, like when aircraft is turning, it is slightly rolling in the same direction and then it's turning. Why? To reduce, to minimize the area of turn. What will happen if I not roll, if I directly turn to the left, then what will happen? Aircraft will turn to the left, but it will take much time. Like, if I am rolling left, then turning left, 
then it will turn very sharply. But if I am not rolling and just turning to the left, then it will try to go forward initially, then slide. The slowly slowly it will try to turn left. So it will take much more distance to go left. But, but if I, when I just roll the aircraft and then turn, then it will go sharply. So this is a rolling moment, this is known as the aileron, aileron of the aircraft. So total it's having a three different control surface. Aileron, rudder and the elevator. Any question? No? So this was about the uh, RC plane, now about the multi-copter. Multi-copter is very simple and the plane has Planes are uh, little bit complicated, but the multi-copters are very simple. It's having only three different parts. These are center base, base plane, base plate, and this the landing gear. All electronics of the multi-copters are fitted in this center plate. They are uh, all are connected to this kind of different cable with this electronic speed controller with the motor. Nothing else. It, this is a very simple uh, construction is there. But if you talk about the plane, it's having a little bit complicated construction. This is the landing gear under the carriage, but it doesn't have the wheel, so uh, can we uh, call it the landing gear or under carriage? Yes? Yes. This is the quadcopter same, uh, hectacopter, like this, the six arm, and what is the last? Why octacopter? Perfect. So uh, this was uh, my small presentation about the aeroporting and uh, I request you to come in aviation branch to get up your future in aviation so uh, we India get in a, like, a good manner to the we India grow to the full level compared to the country in aviation so this was uh, this is the end of the session now I will try to fly mini drone uh, here and then we will go in the ground for the flying of the uh, this RC <laughs>